quarter million dollar masterpiece vanishes from an upscale art gallery in broad daylight. The Picasso print disappeared in plain sight. I'm thinking that we're dealing with a professional. But this heist was only one of many pulled off by a suave, opportunistic thief amassing a million dollar art collection. It was like, th this is incredibly easy. I'm pretty good at this. These places did not have sophisticated security setups. There were no eyewitnesses. Mark did his homework. Can investigators save a precious Picasso before it's gone forever? I'm looking at my watch and I'm thinking, okay, we're now two hours behind. Let's go, let's move. I had no idea the police were this hot on my trail. Bingo, everything is falling beautifully into place. For the first time ever, the real mastermind who planned it. It was, uh, was drilling, pulsing through my veins. The theft was ballsy. And the cops who hunted him down. We knew from the get-go that time was of the essence. We were chasing a ghost. Come together to tell their stories as we follow the money. We waited, and at that point, it had gone cold. And dissect a near-perfect crime plagued by a simple yet fatal flaw. For the first time, he began to lose his cool. That was his fatal flaw in this entire heist. This is Super Heists. It's a mild summer afternoon in downtown San Francisco's Union Square, where the business district intersects with high society. At the center, sits the Weinstein Art Gallery, its walls covered with millions in irreplaceable art from masters like Dali and Ernst. But on this day, as an employee passes through the crowd of art lovers, she makes a chilling discovery. She noticed that there was something missing. The blank space on the wall once held a piece from perhaps the greatest painter of the 20th century. Picasso sketch called Tête de Femme from 1965 that was worth around $250,000. So she talked to some of her colleagues to see, well, okay, well, maybe it's in the back somewhere or maybe someone purchased it. And she discovered that no, none of her colleagues had removed the sketch. That's when they realized Somebody was able to walk out the front door of the gallery with a Picasso in hand. What the gallery employees can't know is this Picasso thief is motivated not by profit, but by the thrill of the heist itself. Mark Lugo, Super Heist 105, Marker. My name is Mark Lugo, M-A-R-K-L-U-G-O. Um, I, maybe I should start over. <laughs> This bug just flew in my ear. Marker. My name is Mark Lugo. In 2011, I had stolen about 10 pieces of artwork. Is there anything you can kind of compare that to for somebody you know, that hasn't necessarily done something like that? Oh, for me, it was, it was like driving a car at close to 150 miles per hour, feeling the bolts possibly loosening a, a little bit. It was pretty intoxicating. Mark's comfortable upbringing didn't seem the recipe for a super thief. I was born in, in New York. I went to high school in northeastern Pennsylvania. I've always been a fan of collecting. When I enjoy something, I, I tend to dive in pretty deeply. So I guess in, in that sense, compulsive behavior could be interpreted slightly. While attending William Patterson University in North Jersey, Mark developed a deep passion for one of the finer luxuries in life. Working at restaurants, I caught the wine bug. Right out of college, I decided to pursue wine as a career, as a sommelier. The first restaurant I worked at in New York City was, per se, Thomas Keller Restaurant. From there, I ran my own beverage program as a wine director for the BLT Restaurant Group. I met Mark in 2007. He's always been a very charismatic gentleman with a lot of confidence and a lot of that swagger. Always got the great kind of Lugo smile. Hobnobbing with the super rich gave Mark a taste for a life far beyond his actual paycheck. Within the world of sommeliers, you're around luxurious people. You're around luxurious things. 
you become kind of like a gatekeeper for, for this segment, the 1%, if you will. Very wealthy guys would invite you to the place in the Hamptons, or they've got this amazing house uh, in Miami. And the halo effect of luxury is if you're around it, you want it. Awash in a world of mansions and mega yachts, Mark soon developed a new fascination with priceless fine art. Working in the restaurant business, you, you meet these art curators, uh, these gallery owners. They're like, listen, you, you got to stop by and check out the show. So I was typically going to galleries and museums quite often. From the 1990s through the new millennium, a seemingly insatiable thirst for fine art has driven prices to astonishing heights. $2,350,000. With single paintings from masters like Da Vinci, Pollock, and Van Gogh commanding tens or hundreds of millions at auction. For you, sir, $18 million. We're just in, for better or worse, a golden age of art. And so you have an enormous infusion of money into the art world in the last two decades. $17 million. Some of these, these great works, I mean, there's something kind of magical about them. And $12 million. I appreciate an art piece that, that spoke to me, it moved me. And selling then at $1,450,000. Mark's growing love of priceless art slowly fuels a compulsion to possess it. But without the means to compete in the ruthless $60 billion art market, he can only worship the masterpieces in public museums and galleries. But in the summer of 2011, one visit to a Soho art gallery would transform Mark Lugo from frustrated art fan to inspired art thief and set the wheels in motion for his audacious Picasso heist just four weeks later. I remember noticing some great artwork. Thought it was amazing. As Mark looks around to see if anyone else is equally enamored with the piece, he comes to an unexpected realization. He was the only one there. No one around. I mean, absolutely no one around. And yet there's, you know, about $50 million worth of art on the walls. Mark also notices a surprising lack of security. I looked around and there was no cameras at all. I was uh, befuddled. <laughs> Suddenly, something is ignited inside of him. It was a split second decision where I pick up the, the, the painting itself and physically holding it had kind of changed the dynamic of things a bit. Multiple thousands of dollars worth of money in my hands right now. It was definitely an adrenaline rush, a, a tremendous a drone rush. The adrenaline, that's what fueled him. Call it a crime of passion or one of opportunity, Mark makes a decision that will change his life forever. I looked around and, and, and I just walked out with it. Being able to walk in and walk out the front door with a piece of art was probably a high that you and I have never had. It was something I'd never experienced in my life, and it, it, it was, it, it felt good. I definitely wanted to do it again. The thrill of the adrenaline rush, coupled with the ease of his first heist, sends Mark on a spree of opportunistic art thefts. It was shortly, maybe a week, week later, once again visiting these galleries. It was pretty intoxicating. In just 10 days, Mark takes seven works of art from local galleries and returns them to his Hoboken apartment. With each heist, Mark's confidence grows, transforming him from a nervous opportunist to a much more deliberate thief. When I, I did see a tremendous vulnerability in, in some of these hotels and galleries, it became a bit more calculated. Mark did his homework. He was able to walk around and see what the scene was. And look for where the security cameras were. There could be no direct camera on something I would take. How many people are working there? What the vibe is? where the pieces of art were located in relation to the exit. It had to be a, a clear getaway without any issue. With one successful heist after another, Mark's quiet confidence gives way to cockiness. I was like, this is incredibly easy. You, you think to yourself, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. You know, I'm kind of invincible. Three weeks into his crime spree, Mark pulls his boldest heist yet when he lifts a $350,000 Fernand Leger painting from the iconic Carlisle Hotel on the Upper East Side. 